And so I'll try to sort of take you through what my experience was as quickly as I can. So I came to the second, the 30th verse of the second surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, and it began like this. It said, behold, your Lord said to the angels, I am going to place a vicegerent on earth. The Arabic word is khalifa. It means a representative or an emissary of mine. I am going to place a vicegerent on earth. And they said, the angels said, will you place therein one who will spread corruption and shed blood while we celebrate your praises and glorify your holiness? And God said, he said, truly I know what you do not know. See, that's the verse that hooked me. That's the verse that caught my attention. That's the one that kept on making me read the story again and again and again. Because listen to the way it begins. Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to place a representative of mine on earth, a vicegerent of mine, an emissary, one who acts on my behalf. I thought, that, that's not the way it goes. You're not supposed to be placing man on the earth in some positive role, some elective office. You place man as a, on earth as a punishment for his sin. Clearly, I knew the author didn't quite get the point. But still, it was an amazing line. But then I come to the next line, and it says, and the angels say, will you place her in one who will spread corruption and shed blood while we celebrate your praises and glorify you? I looked at it again. I couldn't believe the question. They said, will you place her in one who will spread corruption and shed blood while we, the angels, celebrate your praises and glorify you? I looked at that and I said, exactly. That would be my question. Why would you create this being, supposedly for some positive role, when he's capable of doing tremendous wrongdoing? when he could spread corruption and shed much blood. Why would you create this violent and pernicious creature when you could create angels? As the angels clearly say, while we, while we the angels, celebrate your praises and glorify you. They were asking one of the most fundamental questions in the entire history of religion. Why create you, man, this utterly fallible creature this creature who could rebel against God's will, who could do such tremendous wrongdoing, who could wreak havoc like no other creature on earth, when you can make them angels. And look where the question is being asked. It's being asked in heaven. It's almost like saying, look, why don't you just make them angels and be up here in heaven with us, you know? Why don't you just make them angels, pop them into heaven, he's fine. Why would you put him on earth where he could feel distant from you, where he could work out his Worse criminal tendencies, act them out, feeling somehow independent and apart from you and free to do whatever he wants, when you could just make them angels and put them into heaven and make them perfectly submissive to your will. I looked at that question and said, that's my question. I'm not, I'm one, not even a single verse into the story of mankind, and there before me I see my question. That whole question, everything that I ever thought, everything that I ever experienced, everything that I ever knew was in that question. It was as if the author took my life and wanted to pick out exactly the right question to humiliate me, to provoke me, to anger me. Why create man, this most destructive and violent creature, when you can make him angels? And then look at the answer. And he said, God said, Truly I know what you do not know. You know, in modern parlance, we would say, I know exactly what I'm doing. I read that and said, what? You know what you do not know? You know exactly what you're doing? Well, please inform me. Tell me what you're doing. Because, you know, I'm, I'm 28 years old, and I haven't figured out it yet. And I have a lot of issues that I'm still dealing with that's connected to this question. You can't just get off that easy. You can't just tell me you know exactly what you're doing. Not after what I've been through. Not after you made me this way. And then I realized, of course, I was arguing with a God I didn't even believe in. And that would happen several times as I read through the Quran. And sometimes I would just get into such... So, so agitated by what I read, I'd start arguing with this voice that's... That's, that I'm reading before me, that's calling to me. 